Hello friends, I am Ardhendu De and you are watching Eddie's English Literature. I am explaining today the title of George Bernard Shaw's problem play Arms and the Man. Keep simple things simple. A good title should be apt and suggestive. It should also be attractive and striking so as to at once capture the attention of the audience or the readers. Just as a signboard indicates the contents of a song, so also a good title should indicate the theme of the play. Let us apply this criteria for judging the title of George Bernard Shaw's beautiful play, Arms and the Man, which was first enacted on 21st April 1894 at the Avenue Theatre and published in 1898 as part of Saul's play's prison volume, which also included Candida, You Never Can Tell and The Man of Destiny. Arms and the Man was one of the Saul's first commercial successes. Now first discuss on the sources. Uh, the title of Arms and the Man, as Shaw himself says in his preface, has been taken from the first line of Dryden's Virgil. Dryden's translation of Virgil's Enid begins with the following couplet Arms and the Man I sing, who forced by fate and haughty Juno's unrelenting head. So has also quoted Arms Virank Kano as a motto in his play which the man is more than his weapons. The arm Virank Kano of Virgil is a mounting and ascending phase which suggests a superb procession which should bring on to the stage the brazen and resounding armor, the seal and shattering axe, but end with the hero himself, taller and more terrible because unarmed. The title of Arms and the Man is chosen after careful consideration. The title is both apt chosen and the dramatic choices justified. It is an ironic reversal of Virgil's original intention. Just um, think about it. Virgil in his famous epic, the Enid, recounts the martial exploits and adventures of Enid, as it happens in all of the epics. But Saul does not look at war with the same eyes as Virgil. He does not write this drama to speak about the glories of war. He rather proves that heroism and utter foolishness do not lie far apart. He shows through his characters that we must divest ourselves of all romantic illusions about war and real success falls to the man who acts with the realist self-composer. That is the key point. The, so, realism is the staple point in Shaw's play. So, here he used this particular uh, phrase in ironic tone. The action of arms and the man evolves out the background of war, that is arms, the word. It impacts on the fate of the soldiers and those who came in contact with them. So here the man reference, representing different states of life. The fortunes of soldiers from the staple of the plot. The discussion on uh, what bulks large in the drama. Here those who are romantic face disillusionment and find themselves fools, while those on the other hand uh, who are realist in thought and approaches sucked at the every age in life. 
Raina, the heroine, has romantic notions represented. Sarjia is the romantic fool in contrast with the brilliant comic figure and matter-of-fact soldier Captain Blansley. The moment the sun of Blansley's realism rises on the horizon of the play, I must say, the fog of Raina's romanticism disappears. Raina's disillusionment and the revelation of the hollowness of the ideals of love and heroism. In fact, an unromantic and unsentimental saga of arms and the man. Leonard Shaw has successfully accomplished his mission through his title. It is through, it is thought-provoking, interesting and ironic. Further, it gives Shaw full vent to his comic genius along with his serious engagement with the major social ethical issues. Thus, Arms and the Man is a befitting title, I must say, to a drama like this kind of, uh, this kind of romantic drama, rather romantic comedy in anti-romantic vein. Arms and the Man is a befitting title to a drama, where word is the mainspring of actions and thoughts. No doubt it deals with romantic love, but the main theme is the fictitious glory of war. The play aptly demonstrates the power of man over arms. It shows how man controls situations, overcomes obstacles, and thereby proves himself superior to arms. This makes the title quite appropriate. So what do you say? Is my explanation correct or to the point? Do you have any suggestion? Drop it here. Bye bye. As a good will guest chat, hit like and subscribe. Bye bye.